Greetings everyone. As you can see I'm going to be doing some work on the Atari 410 and like I had in the last video i am got this set of four belts for it which I'm going to be putting in now <coughs> and actually you notice there's no caps this time well I'm not re there are some electrolytics in here but I won't be replacing those this time as the ones that are in here as you can see right there and some others on the board on there and underneath those appear to be as far as I can tell and I have tested this previous to this video they are in still operable condition no bulging no leaks so far so I'll be saving that work for later so in the meantime, I'm just going to get right to it and start on the friendly neighborhood, not quite prehistoric tape deck. Okay, so just got to remember which way I'm. Okay, yeah, before I open this up, I think I'll start on the tape counter, which is right there, which is exposed enough that I can replace that without having to take everything apart first. And let's see. I will... Pull on that here, and that tore as soon as I came off. Of course, it wasn't actually, and yeah, I'll show you again. But <clears throat> this is the new one, and you'll notice this whole thing is quite a bit thinner. I don't know if it was a whole lot thinner, but it's definitely suffered a lot of wear due to age. In fact, when I tried this before recording, it had actually the counter wasn't working at all. It would play after a fashion, but it, all the belts would stretch enough that it really wouldn't load much of anything without tons of errors. So it definitely needs some work. Hmm. Actually, I may just uh, you know move this cap up. Yeah. Maybe I should have pulled that board out of the way first. Probably would have made this part easier. and that's on but I won't be testing that until I get the whole thing done which will probably be in the next video since I have the computer yet to work on This did come with the bundle with the 800XL and the 1050 drive all at once, so... This is no doubt somebody's part of somebody's original setup, probably from the early 80s. Since the date on the... Uh, is it, yeah, right there. The date is 982, so September 82. So this thing is just over 40 years old from the date I'm recording this. And I will get my magnetic, as you can see I'm working on a bunch of things here, but this is my little magnetic bowl here, which just helps me keep track of all these screws so I don't have them rolling off the table and under things where I'll never find them again. Maybe I'll try my other screwdriver. I'm 
pretty sure this is the first time any of these boards have been taken off or out of the recorder since it was built over 40 years ago now. can't see it but these brass standoffs were actually just spinning around so hmm. uh, looks like I'll have to grab myself a set of pliers I'll try my little small pair here to see if I can get this steady enough to still spinning so <clears throat> I'm gonna have to see if I can well I'm gonna see if I can get these to cut oh this one's coming loose so yeah They're probably just a bit longer than I expected like I'm all set after all. Yeah. Yeah, well, this is probably the first time this has been seen service and well, since I left the factory, like I said. Because the bundle this was a part of was an 800 XL computer and the 1050 drive, which of course go together or matched up together from about 83 to 85 when they were made this on the other hand was built from 78 or 79 up to 82 and these of course were as you probably know were built to go with the 400 and 800 so with its SIO connection, it will work on any of the Atari 8 bit computers. Right up until I stopped making them in 92. I should turn this around so I can get a better view. Unfortunately, the camera setup is not far from ideal, so. I'm not going to see much of this side being opened up, so I'll get this over here slightly out of the way. And yeah. you know, when I first got my first, very first Atari 8 bit in the late 80s. After having used a Commodore 64 for several years, my first I was on a very tight budget, just having finished high school. So, actually, the first peripheral I got was another one of these 410s, the same Hong Kong model. A lot like this one. In fact, it was identical, really. And. That I used for a few months until I got a 1050. So this setup, when I get it fully working again, it's actually mostly working condition now. The 1050 has no troubles, but I'm going to recap it anyways. And the computer is going to get a recap as well, at least for the electrolytics. new setup will be very reminiscent of what it had originally back in about 88. 
other than I also have a 1025 printer which again you know I'm not going to be using that for word processing or anything but will come in handy occasionally for printing out program listings because I will be doing a bit of my own programming on this machine and that will show up on a later video and luckily enough I can still get actual ribbons for this thing believe it or not because the ribbons were used by a lot of equipment back in the 70s and 80s and there are a few sources to still get them even on sites like Amazon Hmm. This won't stand off as being a bit of a nuisance. And now I see why. It is a, in fact, a small nut right there, so I'll have to get my friend in the neighborhood. Whoops. Can't mess with the camera stand, which is a bit. Wobbly. Uh, better use my well worn needle nose pliers. Grab that nut so it doesn't keep spinning so I can get this one flaming nuisance of a nut off and the standoff out. Got a better plan. I'm going to get these out and I can take the cover off and then I'll have better visibility for getting that nut and screw and stand off out of there. You can hear those, hopefully, you can hear those crack as I start taking them out. You know, that's makes it pretty certain to me that this definitely has not been worked on since I got it. And let's see, one more. Yeah, right back here. And this looks to have some may or may not see that, but that right there, it looks like they put some cheap nail polish over the screw on the bracket. It's sort of a cheaper bargain bin Loctite. Some of the electronics jobs I had in the past would actually use, you know, some very cheap no-name nail polishes, usually the colors that weren't too popular were like various shades of green that only Santa Claus's mother would love. Let's see, uh, what else is over oh, this? Of course. One more screw to come out right here. guy is out of the way for now. And now that little washer or nut I should say washes on the other side up here. can get that in the bowl. Now I can get this. Yeah, there it comes. I can shift this PCB out of the way. For the most part. Of course, all these wires above and below are 
still kind of getting in the way a bit, but I think I can get this. And I've seen this done where, yeah, I should be able to take that out without it. another belt there which I think this is for the rewind or fast forward I forget which let's see here. Mm, yeah. yeah this is what I think pretty sure is the fast forward that in fact I'll do that now as soon as I figure out which one this is the main drive belt up the eighth end pull this off okay this is the old one here you can see it's all stretched out. And we'll take a look at this here. I know it's hard for you to see with my hands in the way. Yeah. Yeah, so this guy right here is what goes around this spindle. And okay, so I have to. got it right there so I got it it's hard to see I know but right there the second belt is in place now this one goes underneath here which is right under here the main spindle connect to the drive motor and number four belt uh, can't remember where that goes but I'll find it soon enough so this one, our tape counter, that's already been replaced, so... My recording setup is far from ideal, but... That's all I got, so that's what I'm using. And these screws, I don't think I'll, I'll keep. Yeah, I'll keep this with the uh, this little retaining bar here because those should be able to stay right there. Now. I'm just having a quick look where this fourth belt belongs, but I don't think pondering that. I got Mr. Old main belt replaced with <coughs> son of main belt, which is gonna send the old one to the Better see old belts home. And that's on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I really I've gotta get that around. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was something I didn't quite get that little counter belt on right. And it's gotta go underneath this little flange under there and there it goes. Now that counter should work, so. And there's still this one to put in, and 3D, 3 out of 4 ain't bad, but I really want to do all 4. Let's notice something a bit odd here. This casing, you may not see it, but this looks like a voltage regulator or an SCR or something like that. That looks a bit weird because it's a green casing and almost all the ones I've seen are black. A bit weird, but I guess it was the early 80s. They, things like that were a bit more common. 
Anyways, uh, oh, it's a Mit yes, let's see, I think it's a Mitsubishi part. Anyways, but yeah, now, hmm. it's definitely weird because. This fourth belt. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm seeing it. This is going to be a there to get out. It's just spot of the fourth belt. It's around this. Um, yeah, this is actually where, when the tape is rewound, this is the spool where it's wound up on uh, inside the cassette. And I just found the belt inside here. Ah. Uh, and this is going to be a real bear to replace, I think. Yeah. I can see it under here as well, which, oh boy. Uh, what the freak am I going to do with this? I may have to do this one off camera, because I have a feeling it's going to take way long. No one's going to want to watch all that, and... Listen to me possibly effing and blinding in frustration with it. If it gives me the aggravation, I think it will. Yeah, so, um... I'm going to put you on pause while I work on that. So, back in a bit, all you... see what's wrong with that. That's something I'm going to have to sort out and I'll, I'll sort that out off camera and then show you the results next time after it's done. So until then, see you next time. And at some point in the near future you'll be seeing this being tested and probably operational. So bye for now and have a good night, good evening or whatever. back again and as anyways that belt that was right under there that was hard to reach I managed to look it up and yes I had to look it up as we often do and anyways I had to loosen off this particular nut here to move this arm up so I could pull out this gear and then get it off this end and after that it was relatively easy. So now I'm getting this retainer bar back into place. A quick visit from Mr. Screwdriver. And that's all four belts into place. And I can start getting this deck back together again. as soon as I get everything lined up again. Which I think... Yeah. I just got to get lined, that lined up, so back in a minute. stretch. Well, I am anyways, so anyways, pretty sure this is where this belongs. I'll get that old nut in. And I'll start getting these well, these particular and it's there's always one, and this time it's right here that's deciding it's not going to go, it doesn't want to go in straight. And, oh, 
there it goes. Got it. into place, all of them, and this is the dull but necessary part, but at least it's almost over, well, for another 20 years or so, anyways. Time this thing wear it, these belts wear out again. Who knows if this will be even working, or I'll even be worrying about it, or if I'll have any tapes left to use on this thing. And I can't remember if I mentioned it earlier, but I did have a few that came with this. But I'm not sure how many of them still work. Although here in Toronto, there's at least one source of tapes. There's a in some of the smaller malls, at least in the East End. There's a place called Rizvi Electronics, and they do have some. At least sometimes have some blank tapes in which can typically get for three to four dollars each, maybe a 90 or a 60 minute tape. I like the 60s better on the computer because you don't have to fast forwarding and rewinding through them so much. There's nothing like those 20 minute or 30 minute tapes that you used to get back in the 80s because well, so few people using them these days. I think most of the people who still are, are either retro computer hobbyists like me, or probably you watching this, or... Or a few people who are using them for their music, which is probably not that many aside from those of us who watch that Techmoan channel, which is one of the bigger ones here on YouTube. I'm trying to This is always one of those scenes where it's, it turns into a four-handed job, usually. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, this, yeah. I think I got it lined up. Probably didn't see it, but there is some brass um, mounting post inside here where it lined up with these spacers lined up to mount to the top of the case. Except for this one here, which is needs the nut, which I didn't notice when I was taking it apart. This 
made a mistake, well, not usual, but I did make a mistake, and put that nut back on the wrong post. It's over on here when it should be on this opposite side, where there's no, there's no post in the uh, plastic top casing to screw into. If I do it like this, that nest ain't going to sit right. again. Where this goes right over here. Anyways, if I can get this tightened up. can't see it because of the crap camera angle. since this is going to be a rather long video and the computer isn't recapped yet I'll be doing the testing of this in another video which will come after the computer being recapped so it ain't just to keep you in suspense All these main screws. Now for the secondary ones, and I gotta get this grounding. Uh, well, it's not really ground because it's just crimped out of insulation. This, this little pain in the neck right there. And I'll get my little magnetic ball of screws in there. And get going on these. And hopefully even without a recap, hopefully this will give this old recorder another few years of use. I don't know how many, maybe two or ten or twenty, who knows. But anyways, It'll be worth it just 